hell. A choking expanse of black smoke for a hundred miles and more. No sun. No light. As dark as the blackest night. 788 oil wells destroyed. 613 wellheads belching bright orange flame, burning out of control. Millions of barrels of oil gushing from the ground every single day. Enough to keep the fires of hell raging for another 50 years. Sarah Akbar of the Kuwaiti Wild Well Killers. It was pitch dark, and the more I drove into the field, the darker it got. I have never thought of this kind of darkness because the smoke made the air completely transparent. This was Kuwait in 1991, victim of the worst act of environmental destruction in human history. They came first from Texas, men who had fought fire all their lives, men who knew the risks. Pat Campbell of Wild Well Control. Even all of us that had worked on well fires and blowouts our whole life, no one ever saw hundreds of wells burning at the same time. Red Adair of Red Adair Service and Marine. When you first got in, it was a heck of a bad looking sight. At first, their experience told them that it would take five to seven years to extinguish all the fires. Five to seven years that would destroy 10% of Kuwait's oil reserves. Years of contaminated water of choking black smoke and darkness. Years of hell. Abdul Rahman al Awadi, Kuwaiti Minister of State for Cabinet Affairs. We are talking about an unprecedented ecological catastrophe, the likes of which the world has never seen. We need the help of the whole world to cope with this. And the world responded with the largest non-military mobilization in history. The Americans were soon joined by Canadians, Hungarians, Britons, Chinese, men of every nationality that had ever known this kind of fire. The Kuwaiti wild well killers astonished observers with their work rate and fearlessness. Bulldozers piled desert sand layer upon layer into blazing pools of oil, one road leading to every fire. The kind of fire that could raise air temperatures so high that the sand melted into streams of flowing glass. Now they needed water to cool both men and equipment. To get it, they reversed the flow of pipelines from the Arabian Gulf. Where crude oil once flowed to the sea, water now flowed in the opposite direction. Millions of gallons, pumped in constant streams over every wellhead, every machine, and every worker. Cooling them just enough to begin the task of removing twisted metal debris from around the well so it was safer to start fighting the fire. The 
water keeps you from boiling inside your protective suit. You're sweating out more than a liter of water an hour, and the only shelter is a tin shed. Tin absorbs heat, enough to provide a few moments relief. That was enough to keep the fuel tanks on the bulldozers from exploding. There are many ways to kill an oil fire, and every fire is different. You can ram steel tubes down through the flames and inject mud to block the gusher. You can suspend a hollow tube to lift the flame up for a split second and disconnect it from the oil. Or you can pour in enough water to drown the flames, like the Hungarian team that mounted MiG jet engines on a Soviet tank to blast water at the fire. But the most effective technique of all was pioneered in the Texan oil fields. It works on the simple principle that fire needs oxygen to burn. The one sure way to remove the oxygen, if only for a split second, is with an explosive charge. continued to spew from the earth at more than 1,200 kilometers an hour. This was when the danger was at its greatest. A single spark could reignite the inferno. Coots Matthews of Boots and Coots. Most people don't understand. Getting rid of the fires is the easiest thing. You've got to cap the wells because they're still growing, and that's where the work comes in. Jet cutters blasted high-pressure water and abrasive sand to saw through broken bolts and twisted pipes. New wellheads were cautiously maneuvered over the pipeheads and clamped into place. And the wells never stopped spewing crude till the final bolts went home and the valves were closed. Mike Foreman of Boots and Coots. When you actually get the pleasure of shutting the blowout preventers in, it's the quietest quiet in the world. It's a very good feeling. 613 burning wells, extinguished not in seven years, not in five, but in just nine months. An unimaginable ecological catastrophe had been averted. But now it was time to count the cost. Wildlife habitats ruined. Livestock and bird populations decimated. Smoke inhalation burns. Seven fatalities. But the end could have been much worse without the courage of those who rose to meet the challenge. The men and women from Kuwait and around the world who risked everything to put out the fires of hell. The heroes of fire. Sarah Akbar. When asked if I look back at what happened with regret and sadness, I say, I do not have any regrets because we as Kuwaitis learned much from the catastrophe. Every dark day had a bright side and we have to remember the bright side.